Well, we're joined from central London by the former Foreign Secretary, Sir Malcolm Rifkin. Well, Sir Malcolm, are we looking, as some have said, at the prospect of a second Cold War here? Uh, yes, we probably are, but not in the sense that existed in the 1970s and 1980s. This is not a question of a Cold War that could lead to a hot war at that time involving nuclear weapons. We're not remotely in that sort of territory. But what we are seeing is a defining moment for the relationships between Europe, the West as a whole, and Russia. Uh, diplomacy, obviously, is what's being used at the moment to try to discourage Mr. Putin. But we need to come to a pretty clear idea in the next 24 hours as to what his intentions are. If he wants this to be de-escalated, he has to give a very clear signal of two things, that he recognizes and accepts the territorial integrity of Ukraine and that the Russian troops are going to be withdrawn to Sebastopol very quickly. If he doesn't do that, then you are going to see a very rapid deterioration of the substance of relationships between Russia and, and not just the West. I should imagine China will be as angry as the rest of the world. China is Russia's other neighbour, and that also has to be borne in mind. OK, but clearly a very serious situation then. But in the, the seriousness of that, of that situation, the West, the power of the West is slightly hampered, not least because the British Parliament uh, voted against um, military action in Syria. And that's contributed to this sense, has it not, of the West being somewhat power, powerless. And Putin is exploiting that. Yeah, well, it, it, on the margins, perhaps, but I don't think that is that significant. We all know that Russia, since the end of the Cold War, has had ambitions to try to recreate some kind of control over what used to be parts of the Soviet Union. Putin once said that the greatest geopolitical disaster in his lifetime not, wasn't the collapse of communism, it was the collapse of the Soviet Union, by which he meant the Russian Empire. And Ukraine, the, the reabsorption of Ukraine into some sort of control by Moscow has been his ambition. That collapsed when Yanukovych fled to Russia. Uh, that we're now seeing the consequences of that. I just make one additional point at this stage, and that is we keep being told that Crimea is occupied by the Russian public. It's a Russian majority territory. It is a Russian majority territory, but almost 40% of the people in Crimea aren't Russians. They're Ukrainians or Crimean Tatars or other countries. So Crimea is as ethnically divided uh, as parts of Ukraine itself are. The Russians have no claim to that territory or to any uh, undue influence uh, on it. OK, so how then can the West demonstrate that it does have power over this situation to exercise it? Well, this, you're going to see not just one thing in isolation. Several things are developing. Uh, the Ukrainian government have mobilised its armed forces. So far, they've shown extraordinary restraint. How long that can last, it's difficult to know. But if that turns into a shooting match, we saw uh, with Finland and uh, the Soviet Union in 1940, with Georgia and Russia, although the Russians might eventually win, it would take quite some considerable time. They would suffer a lot of losses. You would have a serious military conflict. Putin, if he's in his right mind, cannot be wanting that to develop. If that is combined with the prospect of Russia losing its relationship with the European Union, losing its relationship with NATO, seeing uh, an abandonment of the G8 summit that was due to take place in Russia, not to mention a whole range of other economic and other measures that the United States, the West, can take. With, I suspect, the support of most of the international community, Putin would be making a huge political and diplomatic disaster for himself, quite apart from the military implications involved in going to war with Ukraine. OK, so Malcolm, we'll be back with you in a moment to unpick some of those points with some other guests. But thank you for now. Thank you very much.